Welcome to the American Red Devils podcast. I'm John. I'm Alex. And we're bringing you the best Manchester United news from this side of the pond. Woo, sir. How we doing? How we doing? We're coming to you straight live from that Manchester United dressing room. I don't know what to say, really. Three minutes to the biggest battle of our professional lives. All comes down to today. Either we heal as a team or we're going to crumble. Inch by inch, play by play, till we're finished. We're in hell right now, gentlemen. Believe me. And we can stay here, get the shit kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back into the light we can climb out of hell one inch at a time now i can't do it for you i'm too old i look around i see these young faces and i think i mean i made every wrong choice a middle-aged man can make i uh I pissed away all my money, believe it or not. I chased off anyone who's ever loved me. And lately, I can't even stand the face I see in a mirror. You know, when you get old in life, things get taken from you. I mean, that's, that's, that's part of life. But you only learn that when you start losing stuff, you find out life's this game of inches. So is football. Because in either game, life or football, the margin for error is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. Hell yeah. Right. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. <laughs> On this team, we fight for that inch. Right. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that inch. Yeah. We claw with our fingernails for that inch. <laughs> because we know when we add up all those inches, that's gonna make the fucking difference between winning and losing. Between living and dying. I'll tell you this, in any fight, it's the guy who's willing to die who's gonna win that inch. And I know if I'm gonna have any life anymore, it's because I'm still willing to fight and die for that inch. Because that's what living is. The six inches in front of your face. Now I can't make you do it. You gotta look at the guy next to you. Look into his eyes. Now I think you're gonna see a guy who will go that inch with you. You're gonna see a guy who will sacrifice himself for this team because he knows when it comes down to it, you're gonna do the same for him. That's a team, gentlemen. And either we heal now as a team or we will die as individuals. That's football, guys. That's all it is. Now, what are you going to do? <laughs> Sir, that is what gets you hyped in the morning. We are back for the 2022 2023. Season preview, sir. I can't believe we're already back in action starting next weekend against the mighty seagulls of the South Coast in Brighton. 
Big season ahead. Eric Ten Hag, his English is coming around very well. Getting the boys hype mode. You know, a lot of pressure is going to be on that second string squad, sir. Jimmy Garner, Maud Diallo's, Facundo Flustries of the world. They ain't, there ain't much in the depth chart. They might be called up sooner rather than later. How you feeling? How we doing? Look, another year, another season. Clean slate. New manager, Eric Ten Hag. Doing well. Unfortunately, the lads lost to Atletico Madrid this morning in Norway, of all places. Look, I think you said it. You know, we got a, we got a great coach. These players that we have, it's we need bodies. Uh, starting the season a week from today, we're going to be breaking down uh, the 2022-23 season. This is the 10th season since the great Sir Alex Ferguson retired. Uh, you know, we can look back on these 10 seasons since he departed. And man, I always thought we had to win a league within these 10 years to not fall off a cliff like the Scouse Bastards did for those 30 years in between titles. And right now, with year nine being the low so far, let's hope year 10 isn't a dead cat bounce and we are actually heading back up into form. I don't know if this club can survive the Glazers' ownership. That is something weighing us down, but I do think Eric Ten Hag and patience and investment in the right areas of the squad can and has to save us from the depths of despair, becoming like the villas of the world. This great club, it can't have a 30-year title drought. Ah, universe is a perfect place, sir. You know, we had a good run, as good as it comes, really. Could have picked up a couple more Champions Leagues um, between friends under the Fergie era, but it's not going to be done. The streak ain't going to be broken on year 10, I'll tell you that. If there's any indication of the level of desire, ambition shown by the owners, this window, hey, it's too soon to call, but that being said, look at our rivals. Not good enough. Five first team starters slash rotation players left and we brought three in um there's holes everywhere i'm excited i'm unbelievably excited about the manager we have in first you know first proper manager we've had since jose and i think he's on the up versus jose being kind of on the slip um he's got a philosophy he's a no-nonsense coach he's got a way that he likes to play gets the most out of the team he has available but even looking at the game we had today against atletico they did us dirty, if you remember, not so long ago in the Champions League knockout stages. There's a decent squad, um, but Martial picked up an injury. Sancho ended up not even making the squad because he came down with an illness. Veron can't keep fit. You know, that midfield, you lose a Fred. He gets a red card like he did today. He's missing a match. You don't have many players that you could put in that midfield. Maybe play Erickson a little deeper, but then all of a sudden you're calling on Jimmy Garner. You don't even have a Pereira anymore, so... I don't want to be a complainer. I don't want to be Who? a winger. Sorry, Pereira. Pereira's got more EPL minutes than Jimmy Garner or Hannibal Mejbri. So, dude, there's just there's no depth at all. It's actually kind of insane when you really look at the squad. They've been kicking the can for years. Not not replacing Lukaku. Not replacing Matic. Pogba, I guess he got replaced with Erickson. But then you still have Mata's spot, Lingard's spot. Either way, a uh, lot to do in this last now four weeks of the transfer window. But it's all about the EPL. Big game. Coming up next weekend, next Sunday against Brighton. But they're a solid team. They've had our number uh, at least last season. So a lot to be excited for, but I'm still concerned because, damn, we're going to get into it. We're going to get into the matches. There are so many matches, so many matches squeezed in. We got a like first ever midseason uh World Cup in Qatar. That's going to mess with the players. We've got Europa League. We've got FA Cup. We've got EFL Cup. It's going to be an, a serious marathon. And we have a thin squad. Um, you know, you have to look at it from the director of football perspective. You think about last year, how that season was managed, right? Ole departs early. We go with the interim manager. Then we decide we don't want to buy players in January. There were midfielders available. We know Machis is going to leave. We know Pogba is going to leave. We could sign someone cheap and then go for top four, get that extra $100 million at a bank. That matters. You know, people look at why aren't we spending this summer? We missed out on Champions League. We missed out on that extra hundred million. That definitely hurts Manchester United's finances and hurts our ability to strengthen this team. We punted everything to the new manager. 
now we're at the new manager and we're not going out and getting the players signed where we need them. So if we didn't do it last January, we're not doing it this summer. I know Frankie de Jong, that's a saga. Ronaldo, that's a saga. We need a right back. We need another attacking player. We need another midfielder, regardless of Frankie de Jong, regardless of Ronaldo. The amount of bodies that we need in this team for this manager to actually be able to have a rebuild. I mean, we're talking about just the basics of what Ten Hag needs to last this season. I don't care if it's a loan deal to wait to buy the the, the right player that he wants. We need bodies in, and we're starting to see it. The one thing that stands out to me after watching the – the what's the stupid charity shield community between shield. the scouts – it, the, the, the community shield between the Scouts Bastards and Shitty this year, something that we used to be in every year. You know, those were the days. The depth those teams have is incredible. Yep. And we do not have that. Like you say, what happens when Marshall gets injured? What happens if Rashford gets injured? What happens if Mc, McTominay gets injured? You know, we did sign a, a, a cent, I think center back were fine. Left back, right back need cover. Midfield need cover. Striker need cover right wing. Jaden Sancho goes down to Longa. He's not ready for that yet. Nope. You know, he should be in the first team, but he's not ready to be t- play 22 games for Manchester United. For me, this highlights the issue at the, the core issue at the club. It's the footballing infrastructure above the manager. That infrastructure makes it so that you Manchester United never has a team this thin. We're thinking proactively in the window. We're able to sign players without having the manager. Like in January, signing Kessie or somebody on a free would have been a no-brainer to just stop the bleeding for the, making us having to do it all in this window. And so right now, Manchester United, you, you have to look it in the face and just say, look, Ten Hag, great manager. How much can he do with this team? I think the players are good. I think he can get a lot out of them. You need more. We need more. We're too, too thin. No, it's 100% right. And you know what? We talked in the last pod about the the players we've lost. I, I didn't even remember another player that we've lost, which was Mason Greenwood. That's six. Six contributors to the season. Cavani as well. You Cavani know. was one of the five, but I even forgot about Greenwood. He gone, and he wasn't replaced in January when it was known that he wasn't com- coming back. If you remember correctly, Cavani went down at the end of that January January window, Julian Alvarez was still in play, ends up going to City, um, and they also bought Holland. So that tells you what a top team with ambition does. Scousers, like you said, like they have depth to go around. So did Manchester United back in the day. Whenever we were competing for anything meaningful, we always had depth. We always had four strikers, even if they were a Chicharito. Obviously, look at the 99 years. We had strikers coming out of our ears with York, Sheringham. You know, Ole, um, it just goes on and on. So you need to have options because, sir, it doesn't matter how good you are. Players are still going to get injured. Like, Marshall's going to get injured. Rasher's going to get injured. And then we have players. Players got a form. Players, got, players a form. got a form. You, you want to be able to him. bench them. And it's just like this season, I'm optimistic. I'm excited. But we have to be super real. We have to be super real with ourselves. Like, he's going to be relying on, on kids, which is fine. But sixth place, I think, is a stretch. Honestly, no, we, we don't have to get into that that just yet. But yeah, that's what I'm trying to do is trying to say, hey, the manager, I am super excited about Den Ag, and I'm excited about what he's doing with what he's got. But you have to be realistic and you have to judge this season, this next season coming up that we're going to be breaking down. You have to judge it based on this very thin team. And I am the questions I ask are above Ten Hag when you say, why is Manchester United making six hundred million pounds a year in in revenue and that's without champions league and we can't afford to sign a team or plan around contracts expiring plan around departures and be able to get players in because at the end of the day that's the core issue and you know why 86 million pounds of cash on the balance sheet manchester united don't have the money we've always said it hashtag lasers out they're bleeding cash we haven't been able to stack the coffers since covid arnold has a lot to do and we said they do not have the money to spend this window they can get creative with breaking it up in future payments putting on the credit card etc no money down we always say that's what they're going to do but if i was running manchester united this is what they want pretty much they've decided this is the window maybe get creative with a sesco deal a lot of upside 
maybe you get Frankie de Jong on the last day. That, that's really it because they're trying to stop the bleeding because we don't have a lot of money at the moment and missing on the Champions League killed us. So we almost have to just get by and then hopefully they can make some more money next year to be able to spend the following season. This is a – we took half a season off. This is almost taking a season off with not having the depth for Ten Hag, a new manager coming in, and we're not putting down – the money to back him. It's crazy. And it's because the money's not there due to the, the way the Glazers decide to run the club. But sir, we could go all day about the Glazers. Quick PSA for the podcast. If you like the America Red Devils, we are for fans by fans. We don't have any sponsors on this podcast. We can call it like we see it. The reason why we can do that is because of our Patreon. Please check out our Patreon page, patreon.com slash American Red Devils. We do a behind the scenes Patreon podcast every single month. We also give away merch as well, and it's how we want to be supported. We're going the direct fan support. That's why you don't have all the ads you've heard in every other pod. They have emailed us too, and we will not advertise uh, shavers, basically, is how I would say it. <laughs> uh, also, check out our website, americadellas.com. Click on store. We have our new uh, Munich Air Disaster Memorial Scarves, 65th anniversary this season. It is an amazing scarf, the best one we've designed to date. Use code MUPPET for 15% all scarves. We also got the Glazers Out scarves in stock as well. Check out our blog and our Discord channel. Sign up on our Discord. It's a chat with tons of fans. They're all Muppets like us, talking about transfers, talking about match recaps. Check out our Discord. Invite us pinned on our Twitter and on our website at americadevils.com. Sir, tell them about iTunes reviews iTunes reviews or five-star reviews of the American Red Devils podcast, wherever you listen, is the best way to support the pod without spending any of your hard-earned money. This is how you do it. Uh, write a five-star review and send a screenshot to AmericanRedDevils at gmail.com with your mailing address, and I will personally pick, pack, and ship some free ARD gear. Send it to your door anywhere in the world, absolutely free. Just send out a shipment to Wales, Istanbul, Turkey, Singapore, and everywhere in between in the great U.S. of A. Great ways to support the pod. Uh, it goes a long way to helping us get found organically. Sir, it is the 2022-2023 season preview. We got a World Cup in between. We got Europa League on the menu. Hansa Franz is back in business, baby. Before we get into that, there was preseason this today. I'm talking about practice. How'd it go? Uh, talking about practice, Manchester United lined up against Atletico Madrid. We ended up losing... Uh, one nil. Jao Felix scored the goal. Uh, we lined up with David De Gea, world number one in net. Malasia at left back, interesting. Lindelof, Maguire, center back pairing. Maguire on the right, Delo on the right. McTominay, Fred, Mick Fred midfield. Marcus Rashford, Bruno Fernandes, Ilonga on the right, and Martial up top. Uh, came out of the game, looked a little cagey. Atletico came at us. Uh, but we did have opportunities early. Rashford had one. Martial had one. Two really good chances that we do, were not able to convert. I, United just didn't pick their chances. And then the one real opportunity Atletico Madrid had, they converted with Jao Felix. Absolutely just handled Delo. Uh, and that is one of the issues I have right now with Delo being the starting right back for Manchester United. I do like Delo. I think he's a good player. But defensively, he's going to be playing against Ruben Diaz. He's going to be playing against Phil Foden. You saw what Jao Felix did to him. This is his weakness. And against elite talent, I, you know, our left and right back, it's going to be interesting because they're going to be in put, they're going to be stretched and put in a lot of these dangerous positions and we can get punished. And you know, when we get punished is we can't finish. And then we get it hit on the counter. It's going to be rough, but you look at the stats 56% of the ball to United, 481 passes to Athletic Madrid's 377. You're getting an idea of what Ten Hag wants to do. Shots on target, 4-2 to two for United. Shots, 13-7. to seven. We dominated on the stat sheet, but again, a 1-0 loss this morning. We're talking about practice. I think it's interesting. Malasia looks like he's going to be starting. He had a good game, so probably the most interesting thing of the lineup I could see, but Alanga not looking ready. For sure, not looking ready to be starting week in, week out. No, no doubt. Uh, interesting in Malasia, encouraging overall. You know, kind of something that we're going to have to work on as the team gets more adept at playing Eric Ten Hag's style and also gets more confidence. But 
creating chances, which is good. You got to take those chances. That's that's almost more important than um, creating them. And then, kind of a typical Manchester United goal: Lindelof too soft in giving the defend in giving an attacker too much space. And then the same with the low. It's like that is a big weakness for United. We got four left backs at the moment. I'm talking about like um, director of football, sir, and squad depth. We have how many? Seven center backs at the moment. Two right backs, neither of which is probably good enough for the Premier League. And then thinness all over the midfield and attack. So. Interesting mix of the moment, um, but encouraging points. Bruno looking solid. Uh, Sancho not featuring because he came up with an illness. Martial looking decent, but then he went down with an injury. So sorry, I'm being encouraged, but um, this season is right around the corner, and this is basically a squad that looks no different than what we had a year ago. And in many ways, if you look at, we'll talk about the squad depth in a second, but it, we were weaker than we were going into last season. Um, even without the Ronaldo news, you know, you have six players out that contributed three players in. That means we're down three and we're, you know, in some ways we were no, yeah. patchy in areas last season as well. So last year, I would say, uh, you know, Matic is a stopgap CDM. You know, we were at we had a good balance to make a run for sure. Like, I, I think that if you look at our, our front front attackers, the midfield definitely light on the defensive side. But we had the depth to, to, to go for it. Um, this year, there's glaring holes. And the fact that we're not addressing them yet. We're not addressing them yet. Now, we have time in the window. Uh, I'm just nervous with the season starting. Also, big shout out to Harry Magoo. Like, wide open dunk header opportunity. He just, like, whiffed on. The amount of... I, I have to also say that, like, Harry Maguire gets tons of headed opportunities and they, they, you, the amount of you, you, you can see, I've said it so many years on the pod, like he should be scoring like six, seven goals. And, you know, these headed header opportunities, he needs to really kind of work on that because, you know, another one today um, went begging and those are the ones we got to score. So look, Hey, we're talking about preseason. You got to step up to the plate and, you know, we sh- we shall see. It's going to be interesting, but it's just practice playing again. We go again tomorrow. Ronaldo's back. He said he's going to be a whole nother 11. So it will be interesting to see how we line up tomorrow morning. No doubt. Um, and like you said, very good point about Harry. I think defensively he played well in this game. He's looked good last couple of games, but he's got to score those goals. He scored those goals for Leicester. He scores for England. And he's going to get even more chances, you would think, this season. With uh, I would think Christian Eriksen putting in some pretty good balls. Bruno's getting, he seems to be, you know, as his confidence is high, he'll do better with his corners. So he's going to get opportunities. Now it's just about finishing them. Yeah, my only comment about Alanga is if you have a young uh, player with potential, playing him too much can ruin him. You know, so I view it as like a, it's, you look at the youth, integrating the youth in the side takes a lot of time and patience and you have to find the right spots from the game confidence. Sir Alex Ferguson knew this very well. So my only concern is he's got the talent. He can play there, but it has to be done the right way where if you just run him out for 25 games, you know, he can get frustrated. It's not coming off for him and he has nowhere to hide. And that's the problem with playing these young players is you can almost, uh, kind of you know ruin them a little bit if you don't aren't able to build their confidence in 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 a, in a slow and patient manner so when you up two three goals that's when they should be featuring you know not week in week out because sancho is down with injury all right let's get into our 2022 2023 season preview you heard the speech you know it's an amazing speech by al Pacino. alex insists on playing it every single year every single season until we win the EPL, and then we can reconsider. But until then, that is going to be how we open every single season preview. So, uh, you know, if you have a problem with it, fast forward. But gets me all tingly inside, sir. I wish the boys could listen to it and get hyped. Either we heal now as a team, exactly. or we will die as individuals. Uh, transfer window, the ins. We're going to start with the window to date. This can change. The fat lady has not sung yet. We have until September 1st. Erickson in on a free transfer. Love it. Martinez, 55 million pounds from Ajax. Ooh, a little pricey there. Malasia, 15 million pounds from Ajax as well. The outs. Paul Pogba on a free. Matic on a free. Cavani on a free. Mata on a free. Lingard on a free. 
taking L's like it's alphabet soup. Pereira, 12, 12 million pounds to Fulham. Great deal. Uh, Alvaro Fernandez to Preston North End on loan. And then Henderson, Nottingham Forest on loan. Or he re-linked up with Jesse Lingard. So, so far, a lot of bodies out. Not a lot of bodies in. For me, it's not necessarily the amount of money you spend. It is how many players you get in. Because right now, we need bodies at critical positions on the pitch for Manchester United. Taking a look at the squad depth. Goalkeeper. We've rumored that we're in for another goalkeeper right now. It's David De Gea, number one. Tom Heaton, number two. I I think we bring in another goalkeeper. This one, there's been some rumors. We shall see. Two, probably not enough. Uh, where's the Lee Grants of the world? We need somebody like that. Center back, Ferran, Maguire, Martinez, Lindelof, Twanzebi, Bai, Jones. And we even got Menji at center back for Manchester United. Too many center backs. Bai's got to go. Rumors are to Roma, Phil Jones. Nobody wants him. <laughs> right. The good news is his contract is up at the end of the year. So, Thank Phil you. Jones, thanks, thanks, for, thanks for coming out. Here's a question. If you get rid of Phil Jones and you get rid of Eric Bailly, you got to keep on Zabie, right? Because you can't count on Rafael Varane for like a four stack because he's, his consistency on, on fitness and injury is so bad, even going up to transferring to Manchester United last summer, that you can't like reliably count on him week in, week out. So who do you keep? Of course, sir? but of course you keep Twan Zabie. He's 24. He's an absolute unit. Contracts through 2023. Give him some playing time. Let him earn the spot. Let him earn a new deal at Manchester United. That's the type of player you want down at the depth chart. Twan Zabie's perfect to keep by injury prone. Phil Jones, I don't know what his diet <laughs> regimen is, but he might want to, he might want to, dude, he, he looks more out of shape than me. He might want to call Ronaldo, see what he's eating. Uh, you know, by and Jones, those are the ones that got to go. Twan Zabie, definitely keep him young, still has potential. It hasn't sort of worked out for him at United yet. Looking at left back, we got Luke Shaw, Alex Tellis, and Malasia. Brandon Williams as well. We have four left backs. Brandon Williams rumored to be sold. Tellis is on the chopping block as well. That leaves Luke Shaw and Malasia. I think that's enough at left back. Also, you have to consider that Martinez can play that position too. So left back depth, not so worried. But Luke Shaw being out early in the season, you got to see players beginning fit. And the fact that he's already kind of had fits and starts, not great, but Malasia looking like the starter that hopefully can get us through to get Luke Shaw back in line because when Luke Shaw is firing, he should be the starting left back for Manchester United. And then you go to right back. This is a, the spot we need to strengthen here. Juan Basaka, Diogo Delo. Delo can do it going forward, can't do it going back. Juan Basaka can do it going back, can't do it going forward. Also has had off the field issues. Who knows if that has bled into on the field issues, but Juan Basaka has regressed uh, post Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And at the end of the day, right backs aren't in the league to defend. You look at how Eric Tan and Hag wants to play, and he is the top player to sell. The question is, will anyone buy him? Answer is probably not. Loan apparently is on for Crystal Palace, but the idea is we're probably not going to pay to replace him. So, this is a really weak position for Manchester United. I rate Delo, but again, with young players, Delo on Diaz, Delo on Felix, Delo on insert player here. It's just, you're going to see it. So this is something I'm concerned about. And, you know, going forward, he totally has it. But defensively, you got to have that too. And big weakness for Manchester United. Speaking of big weakness for Manchester United, Central midfield, Fred, McTominay, Garner, Donny Van de Beek, you shitting me. This is all we got. I mean, this is scary. Like, I can't believe we're not thinking about two. And I know it has to do with money because it's all money. It's all it's about so money. So <laughs> then Donny can't, Donny really can't do it. He's so then you're talking enough. about Fred, McTominay, and Garner. Garner and we can't, had, dude, Garner is not We really had Fred, proven. McTominay, Pogba, and Matic last year, you know, and that wasn't enough. That really wasn't enough. So, scary stuff for Manchester United in central midfield. Attacking midfield, we are stacked. Bruno, Eriksen, Hannibal, I love those three. Nothing, I can't say anything bad about our attacking midfield. It's just right back, central midfield, flashing red lights. Like, need it before Brighton. I can't believe we're leaving these positions at the moment for Manchester United. You go down, 
are the proper attacking players here. Oh, left wing, Jaden Sancho, Marcus Rashford, Ilanga, Garnacho. Then you have right wing, Diallo, Shortire, Chong, Palestri. And then obviously Mason not coming back. Center forward, Ronaldo, Martial. Now, Half those players should be on loan, sir. Half those players yeah, exactly. should be on loan or on under 23s, right? Like, you cannot be counting in on Ahmad yet, Fukunda yet. Certainly can't count on Shortire yet. It's just, it's crazy, sir. It's like we got nothing. It's, we've got actually tons of depth at center back and left back, and everywhere else is glaring, especially central midfield and attack. It's wild. So, when you're a, when you're a director of football, it, it's sort of like when you work anywhere, uh, uh, you know, there's, <laughs> People at the top who are the starters, and then, you know, as you filter down, there has to be sort of a pecking order where, you know, there's enough room to move up. Otherwise, it gets too crowded. Now, we have too many young prospects here. You look at Diallo, uh, like the Diallo, the Chongs, the Palestri, the Shortieris of the world. That's like, we have too many. And by the way, we bought Pal- Palestri and Diallo knowing we had Chong and Shortieri. So if you're going to buy Diallo, you got to ship Chong. Uh and you need some more balance. We have way too many young prospects here on the wing and not enough meat on the bone. We have a lot of potential there, right? So you look at the front three, Jaden Sancho, Marcus Rashford, and Martial. Now, Sancho goes down. Okay, Elanga. Can, and then you're talking Ahmad. Then you're talking Chong, Shortiri, Palestri. So it's really tough, and you're already at pretty much unproven talent that should be on loan. They should not be starting for Manchester United. Now, look, this could be a good thing in hindsight. You say, hey, this is this is the what's a rebuild without the build. It's <laughs> yeah, just a re- you're right. This is this is a rebuild without the build. It's called a re. This is a re. We're just like going at it. So maybe some cream's going to rise to the top. But usually when you play youth and you're floundering and everyone's getting different opportunities because no one can step up because they're young. It hurts their confidence, and it's going to be interesting. So right now we're a mess. Uh, You look at central forward and the fact Ronaldo wants to leave, we haven't even got into that part of it. But if he leaves, it's Anthony Martial and Garnacho. And that is – we're Manchester United. Like what are we – we're talking Rooney, Burba, Ronaldo, Tevez. Killers. Killers. Where are the Killers. Tony Martial, not a killer. Not a killer. Like, where are the killers? Please. Ronaldo. J- Jaden Sancho's a killer. Ronaldo's a killer. I'll give you that. Bruno's a killer, like, but he's not an attacker. Like, I, I need strikers. Like, the fact that we only hear one name. The fact that we only hear Some Frankie, days. no other midfield. We only, hear, we only hear this new kid that you never heard of before a week ago, Sesco. Like, the new Holland who's not Holland because Holland at his age was much better than this kid is. who scored, like, eight goals in his whole career. Um... And like you said, I think the one positive is like, hey, this season's a write-off. It's an absolute write-off because the owners have not showed the requisite level of ambition to think that they have serious ambitions for going top four. There's no way because the squad is completely misbalanced. Um, but it's going to put a lot of emphasis on youth. But that's that's tough because some of them will rise. But you can crack and crush players by expecting them to play week in, week out against Premier League opposition that's... Dude, it gets, it gets tougher every year. It's amazing, especially with more money coming into the league and more expertise. This Premier League gets harder every year. Cities of the world are better. They're better than they were last year. Same with the Scousers. Same with the Spurs. Chelsea, Dude, they're not getting so much. Rid of, they're getting rid of Sterling, right? Sterling is like... I know. I know. Like, like, and surplus. I hate, He's surplus. I hate, but he's a good player. I hate, I hate Sterling. I think he's horrible, but he is like a bang. He's like... Check, like in the starting 11 for us and they're just like don't need him anymore Zinchenko I mean like these are good players and they're just like we don't even need these good players anymore there's hey, surplus requirements hey Zeus we gotta take hey, him Zeus. are you kidding me no hey, hey Zeus would probably be if, if we're all leaves hey Zeus would take that from Martial yep. most likely because we know Martial's streaky and he gets injured you know he's a, when he's motivated he's a good player but he's streaky you need to sit him and then this dynamic Wayne Rooney needed to sit. A lot of players couldn't play every single. I mean, like you look at RVP and like certain players you play every week. It doesn't matter, but certain players you need to sit. Marshall is one of them, but who can play Garnacho? Now, like I like Garnacho, so maybe Diallo rises to the top. Maybe Palestri rises to the top. Like I think Palestri has it. Has he has it? 
in him. So he's a player. He needs time though. This, this, he's a kid this is the year 20. we're going to figure it out. So yeah. I, it's 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 like where I am excited about the youth here. You have to also ask the question. It's going to do a little Glazers corner here. If I was running Manchester United and I was at the top of the structure, right? I owned it. I'm looking at the balance sheet and the cash flow. Not making top four was a disaster. So I think the only reason why we absolutely didn't try to go for top four and we did the interim route with Rangnick because it it's a bad business decision. It's because Woodward was on those way out. So we kind of decided, hey, let's take our time. Like Arnold comes in, we can get an interim guy, and then we can figure it all out, right? And that ended up backfiring because United were in a decent position for top four, and then we just like, you know, melted down. Cavani wanted it out. Greenwood, we know that story. You know, Rashford played horrible. Every, like everything went the wrong way, and we missed that hundred million. And now this summer we're like kind of screwed because we don't have a lot of money on the balance sheet. And so what they're thinking right now is like, hey, we got the new manager. Let's just see how the season goes and just try to get to next year because we just don't have the cash. That's literally what's driving what is happening to this team. Because if we made Champions League, we would be splashing much more cash, bringing in many more players. This has to do with how the club's being run. This has to do with the cash reserves at Manchester United. They can't. They're overly levered. They've already negotiated so many future payments on transfers. They can't keep going at this rate, and they need a season off just to manage the damage. Honestly, that is really it. They're getting – now, people will say, oh, well, a lot of wages are off the books. Yes, but when they're off the books for a year, that's when you realize that cash, and that's when that cash will be added to the balance sheet, and that's when they could probably spend it in a season. So, again, the Glazers, you know, tying uh, Ten Hag's arms behind his back, and he's going into a championship fight. In a week, and that's just the way that way it is. You have to talk about the Glazers in this team, but I'm excited to see what this manager does with this team because there's a lot of there's a lot of decisions to be made, a lot of options, a lot of youth, and hopefully he can figure something out because if Garnacho starts just like blowing up, like who wouldn't be happy about that? Hundred percent. Yeah, there will be players that rise to the top, no doubt. But it's a good point. So let's do our Glazer corner, and get it out before we go into the fixtures. There might be a, a part, uh, some part of their mind where they're going to just like Tampa Bay it before Tampa Bay started winning, which is just like, you know what? Top four, that's probably beyond our, our, our grasp at the moment and just be a Premier League side and collect money there, not invest a ton of money in the squad and just be like, well, you know, we're not going to get relegated um, because, like you said, part of it is we don't have cash right now, but it doesn't look like they're trying to change the situation, make more available. Maybe they're kicking the can, like you said, and we'll add some cash to the balance sheet over the course of this year with 60 games and cup games and a full Trafford. But it is concerning because every year that we've crashed out of the top four, um, they spent money. And this summer, it's it's a little worrisome because there hasn't well, you been. Can't, a- you can't spend money you don't have. Well, that's right. The financial situation is like gravity, and you can try to avoid gravity like Barcelona, and then eventually the club might just like not exist anymore. Now, the Glazers are not that stupid because, you know, they are financially minded. And so when they have a ton of debt on the team and there isn't a lot of cash, they're just not going to spend it. And they're going to weather the storm until they start the club starts kicking off cash flow. And a lot of those big wages will help a lot. Shipping those wages off the books will help with the cash flow dynamic at Manchester United. But last year, we had a ton of wages on the books, which is why we didn't accrue cash throughout the season, which is why we're thin, and we really need that Champions League money we missed out. And that's why this summer, I think they like these sagas, because at the end of the day, you push everything on a saga, and then it might happen or it might not happen, and you're like, oh, well, we really tried. And it kind of is a way to gloss over. 100%. It's, it's a way to gloss over. Like, okay, Frankie de Jong, you might get him, you might not, but like we still should get like Neves or Tielemans or – getting a right back or, you know, selling someone or loaning somebody. And that's where I really think the problem in the front office is, hey, understand the budget and then do a lot with what you got because you can loan players. Like Erickson's a great example, free, He's added a ton of value. Like let's go find some free loans for these positions and maybe loan to buy. Like I'm, I'm, I'm totally open. It doesn't have to only be big money transfers. I just don't see the front office being that nimble and trying to deliver here because there's a ton we can do. And right now uh, we've left it too late and we're going to see they're going to start sweating. That temperature is going to go up a little bit. 
But let's go into these fixtures, sir. We got a quick start. Eight games in six weeks. That's not including Europa League. We kick off the 7th against August 7th against Brighton at home. Tough game. Tough game out of the gate. This is a really difficult game for Manchester United. Brighton was at the 4-1 last season away when we were fighting for top four. A lot of drama around that. A lot of stories came out about Ronaldo around that game. We hopefully can't get up for it. Ronaldo will not be involved. You're going to be looking like something that we saw today against Atletico. I think we can do it. I think we probably will do it. Then we got Brentford away on the 13th of August. And then, boom, we got the Scouse Bastards at home August 22nd. Having flashbacks to that five nothing. My feet, I can feel my feet swell swelling right now, sir. I got literally thinking back to Bishop's Blaze. That was the best part of the day. I'll tell you, what, everything was great until the game kicked off when it all went downhill. Southampton away the twenty seventh of August and August four games. Then the window will come to an end. The transfer window will be over. It is going to be a lot to do. And if you saw the Scouts bastards play against shitty today and that team, how fit they are, how deep that squad is. There is no way in hell we are coming anywhere near them on the 22nd of August. And it's a shame. This game is that early. It really is a shame because I feel bad for Eric Ten Hag because this game, it's going to be, this is going to be the, Hey, remember when you beat us in preseason? Yeah, that's preseason, bro. Yeah. And then everyone's going to be like, Oh no. Yeah. There you go. No, it, I really do feel like that's going to be – that's when people are going to realize what the hell are we doing. And then that's probably when – And the window will still be open. On. And the window will the still, window be still open. open, but they're not going to jump, dude. They're, so we're, we're going to see. That's, it's, it's a hard game to have that early. It really is, and I feel for them. I just hope like my – I'm looking at that game being like let's not embarrass ourselves. September 1st, Leicester City away. Then Arsenal at home September 4th. September 11th, Crystal Palace away, then Leeds at home September 8th. Tough run. Does sir. not get easy. It does not get easy. Uh, we're also going to be layering a Europa League across these games. Match day one is September 8th. Match day two, September 15th. So in September, you're going to start seeing these Europa League games. Thursday nights, a lot of travel in Europe. Thin, thin squad. You know, this is a little uphill. This is, you know, we're going to be going a little uphill. So, everyone's got to be thinking about all the stuff we're not even talking about. Obviously later EFL FA, everything's going to get layered in, but a lot to do for this team. Um, and if someone gets injured critical, like say, imagine if Fred gets injured, what do you do? Oof. You know, like Oof. Martial gets injured. Ronaldo isn't playing. Can't get Sesco Sanjo done. Gets injured. Any of these players. He, well, Martial is our striker at the moment. Uh, no, you're going to see nine. like a longer, if like Martial goes down, Ronaldo's out, it would be like a Longa, Palestri, Rashford. And that's like, literally, that could literally be six, seven games in you're seeing something like that. And you're just like, how, why, like these aren't questions that the pod should be asking. Right? <laughs> these are questions that, you know, people at who are CEOs of multi-billion dollar corporations should be asking. And I think just because we've, Watch this game for almost 20 years. We've watched this team for a long time. You know, these are the situations we're going to be in. These are the, we are going to be in situations like this. And you're going to be like, how did this happen? You know, and obviously watching Sancho, Rasher, and Martial kill it in preseason is a great vibe. But like, where's the backups? Because <laughs> they no one plays a full season. And no one's seen a season like this. This is literally now. I'm just counting it up. It's basically two games a week for the whole season. Every you know, week in week out. Even with the Premier League, they're playing. Look, like we get in October in a second. It's every three, four days, and that's why these players aren't going on loan. Ahmad's going nowhere. Fakuna's going nowhere. Yeah. Garnacho is certainly not going anywhere. Same with Hannibal. Same with Gar. Like they can't because we we just don't have bodies. It would literally be negligent to let them go on loan because they're going to be called upon. There's no way they're going to be able to keep Scott and Fred fit. And it, also, you can't be playing those players week in, week out. Donnie, dude, he hasn't shown it. He hasn't shown it at all. So it's like, Jamie Gardner, you know what? If we wanted to put you maybe on loan in a Premier League club, that Premier League club is going to be Manchester United because you're going to be playing minutes. But you know what? Like, part of me is like, if we're going to do it, like, 
if, if if we're just gonna do it this way anyway, like might as well play Iqbal. Might as well play Savage. Might as well play Garnacho. Just might as well just get the kids out there and just like see what sticks. And you know what? If Ten Hag can do that this season, I mean this this is this is the rebuild without the build. And like next <laughs> su- yeah. like next next summer is gonna be the build, right? Maybe. There's gonna be a next summer there is going to be a build element where it's like Harry Maguire, yes or no? Probably like Palestra, yes or no? Like you could answer a lot of these critical questions now based on how this season is starting to look. And like as a fan, we're not going to get relegated. I'm not concerned about it. And I actually think if we were going to like do this build next summer, which it looks like the majority of the rebuild will be next summer, answering some of these critical questions now to pick the players to keep and get rid of for that rebuild is almost probably the main mission of the season it's like don't get embarrassed play a lot of kids figure out who's real figure out who's up for 10 hags program and who isn't and then get rid of those players and that could be me pi luke shaw that could be harry Maguire as well it could be you know palestre and just figure out who can handle it who can't that's really what this season is about it's about the eric ten hags process and figuring out who's who's cut out for it and who isn't and then next season you know, if you're really about the rebuild, you can answer a lot of critical questions this season with this this type of team with a lot of youth. And that could set us up for the awesome rebuild next summer and then going on and winning the title. Right. But it's going to take a rough year. It's not going to be a good good looking year. No, but it's a good point. It's a really good point. And the more I see how little transfers we've made and the players who are actually ready to step up. Right. There's no guarantee of course, but there are li- like very talented youngsters, both in midfield and attack that could contribute to this team going forward. Maybe not this year right away, um, but the best way to find out is to play them some EPL games, EFL Cup games, FA Cup games, even Europa League games, because they're not, you know, they're not all Romas that we're going to be playing. They're going to be playing some mid-level ish sides. That'd be a good chance for the Garners and the Iqbal's of the world to get some minutes. So we ain't got cash. We got a very good academy. We're going to rely on that academy, but that means that the play, that the fans need to have reasonable expectations about what we're going to do this season and also reasonable expectations on what these lads, the young lads, not the ones that are on 150, 200K a week, the kids, like we got to really give them time and, and, and time because it's it's too much pressure to play, have to expect a long to play week in and week out. We saw he couldn't do that. He'd come in for moments. He looked really good, but like week in week out is a different story in the premier league because defenders figure out your play style. They figure out what you're good at. And then they try to take advantage of that. No, I mean, it, it's well said, but you know, it's about expectations for the season, understanding what this is going to be about. And like getting into October man city away, October 2nd, really. I mean like these, like whoever made these Oof. fixtures, whoever made these fixtures, like unbelievable. Then we got Everton away, October 9th, Newcastle at home, the 16th, Tottenham at home the 19th, Chelsea away the 23rd, West Ham at home the 30th. I mean, this start to this year is really tough. This is going to be a really tough one. And October, by the way, we got three Europa League matches in October. <laughs> every other, every, every four days, bro, we're playing. Every three, four days. It, it, a lot of pods. A lot of pods. A lot of pods. <laughs> I was just thinking uh, that. I was like, we are going to work it over time. Hey, good. Pod never sleeps. Aston Villa away, Fulham away on Aston Villa away on November fifth, Fulham away on November twelfth. Then we have the World Cup break. What's interesting about this World Cup is there's about a like, I want to say uh, ten days. That's the it. players go from playing for their club. They usually get like a month, but with their national teams, now they get like ten days with their national teams before the World Cup kicks off. Um, World. When is the FIFA World Cup kickoff here? I thought it was the twenty second. I don't written down. Yeah, November twenty first is when it kicks off. So that is a tight turnaround. <laughs> nine days, sir. You got nine days. And you nine to the days. Also, it's in the Middle East, so you gotta get enough flight. No, obviously, yeah. So it's gonna be hot as shit. This is this is a season like we've never seen before. Winter World Cup, tons of fixture congestion for the players. Then, you know, you think of Manchester United. You think of who on Manchester United is going to be playing and featuring for the national teams. A lot of players are going to be featuring. Look at the England players, Rashford, Sancho, Maguire, Shaw, right? They're, like Fred probably played. Lindelof. Probably play for Lindelof. So you're going to have a lot of starting 11 
playing in the tournament. Obviously, we're rooting against every against all the teams that they're playing for because we want them to come back rested. It's going to be a really interesting dynamic because think of all of our players. If someone goes deep in the tournament, imagine if England goes to semifinal. It's like all, the majority of our players aren't going to be ready to go. It's going to take some time to integrate them back into the squad for the for the for the Boxing Day fixture. Can you believe that? Do you know? Do you have when the World Cup ends? The World Cup final is December eighteenth, and then we play Boxing Day, which is December twenty sixth. Damn. So it's a real tight turnaround. <laughs> Ooh, we need but bodies. I tell you what, we need bodies. The American Red Devils. We are going to the World Cup. We'll be doing pods from Abu Dhabi. We're going to be doing our home base uh, in Abu Dhabi and Dubai, then flying to watch the USA versus Iran. Obviously, uh, World Cup in Qatar, we do not condone, condone any of that nonsense that went on for them to get the World Cup and everything they've done with the stadiums and stuff is horrible. But we had to pick between that and Russia. So we picked the <laughs> – When you're, I'll tell you what. FIFA is a corrupt institution. So you want to go to the World Cup, you're going to these shady countries. And it's just like I can't wait for it to come back to the U.S. in 2026. But – uh, we will be going out there to support the United States. That will be fun. Our buddy Mike will be there. We'll be getting you some World Cup podcasts. It's you know, I love the World Cup so much. It's a it's if you haven't been to one, it's something like the whole world comes together. It's unbelievable. You know, I, it's really a special event, and I'm I'm looking forward to it. And we don't pick where they host them, so uh, I'm, I know. I'm begrudging going to where we're going as much as the next guy. Um, but it is what it is. I want to see the USA play. Excuse to get away, sir. It's in the contract, in the marriage contract, that I get to go and travel for a week for every World Cup. Um, but I think the USA, Mexico, Canada, that's going to show the world how to shot. And that's going to be exciting. But anyway. No, that's back to normal. I mean, like, that's just back to what it should be. I mean, like, the Euros in Ireland. Yeah, that would be like, awesome. Uh, like, like, I, I, like, I'm going to that. You know, that, that, that sounds like, you know, it's like. <laughs> Dark Gales, let's go, baby. Uh, we kick off Boxing Day the 26th of December uh, at home, Nottingham Forest. Jesse Lingard returns. Jay Lings, get those get those acid wash jeans out, baby. Then we go Wolves away December 31st. Then Bournemouth at home January 2nd. And then Man City away the 14th of January. Arsenal away the 21st of January. And then we have Crystal Palace at home February 4th. So... Not too bad, but the Arsenal shitty games early January. I mean, we're going from December. We got to eat. I, I like the December fixtures to ease us back in. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, but then it gets hot. And then, the city. and then it gets hot. Yeah. And then you have Leeds uh, away February 11th. Europa, Europa League knockout stage uh, is the knockout round playoffs are 16th and 23rd of February. Round of 16 is the 9th and 16th of March. And the quarterfinals will be in April the 13th and 20th of April. So can't forget about the Europa League fixtures. So Hans and Franz, I hope Erickson Hag just plays the kids and like we don't care about winning that because there's so much going on that we have to like not get embarrassed in the league. I think is we can't be trying the whole idea of like trying to win Europa League. It's like it's juice isn't worth the squeeze unless you're just not. Like, what's more likely, winning the Europa League and getting top four or getting fourth in the EPL? And the answer to that is probably Europa League. So my assumption is probably wrong, right? <laughs> I would say so. I think that is the fair assumption. We're much more likely to go on a cup run, given that who's in it, um, versus finishing top four, which I think is highly unlikely, given how insane this schedule is, sir. We also have um, <laughs> FA Cup as well to throw in the mix. Those Care games- about Cup? Care about, I mean, like the FA Cup starts. I don't know what round we're going to be in, um, but there'll be games in November and October. We probably might qualify to be in the later rounds of that. That might get going in January, but either way, these games, it's going to be every two games a week for the rest of the season. Can't wait. Pod's ready. I don't know if the squad's ready, sir. You and I, we're not quite in Eric Ten Hag match fitness style, but the banters, we're ready, dude. Give me some extra Diet Coke. I'll be, I'll be ready to rock like Mad Dog Mike, sir. Let's go. Yeah, after this transfer window give me anything like you know like i'll tell you you know what's worse than a horrible season this transfer window you know like this is just 
fans like yelling at each other on Twitter, like which I think is just happening all the time, blaming Ray Nick, blaming Ole. Ole's the best. Ray Nick is the worst. Like you know, it, it, the Manchester United social media has become like almost intolerable. But you know, I, it, that's why I want that's that's why I want to focus on like football. I want to focus on the game because like you can play well against Brighton, you can win. You know, ha- have a good day, and then just all this bullshit about transfers. You can just take a seat for a second. Holy, you know. Uh, so February continues. Leicester City at home, February eighteenth. Brentford at home, February twenty fifth. Scouse bastards away, March fourth. Southampton at home, March eleventh. Brighton away, March eighteenth. Newcastle uh, away, April first. Everton at home, April eighth. Nottingham Forest away April 15th. Finally, we get a break. March 11th through April 15th, not playing against big teams. And then April 22nd, we play Chelsea at home. Then we play Tottenham away on April 25th. Villa at home April 29th. West Ham away May 6th. Wolves at home May 13th. Bournemouth away May 20th. South Coast, baby. And then at home against Fulham, American Red Devils will be there May 28th. Let's go. Let's go. Can't wait to go back to Old Trapper Strepford and our season tickets. America Red Devils abroad. So that's quite a season. You know, there's patches of really tough games. The last three games in the season, last, last five are like reasonable in terms of I, I would love for us to be in a position where we can be in a top four fight. I know the fucking goalposts have shifted, but hey, we need what we need. What we need. And an extra hundred million will go a long way into beefing out the squad. But if we're still in it, that last five games, we can make a push because they're they're reasonable um, given the opposition. Bro, are you kidding me? Uh, the worst – we got death row. Death row. <laughs> October <laughs> is death row. It's rough. City, Everton, Newcastle, Tottenham, Chelsea, West Ham. That is brutal. And that's six games in 30 days and – and we have three Europa League games <laughs> in that month. It's a lot of games. That is, that is, sir, you well, want to talk about the dark days. That could be dark clouds right there. That is a very, very tough set of games. That is very, very hard, you know. And obviously, like, coming out August, Brighton, Brentford, Liverpool, Southampton, that's not bad. September, Leicester, Arsenal, Crystal Palace, Leeds, not bad. But October, Tottenham, Chelsea, West Ham, City. Those four teams are going to be fighting. Like That is going to be very hard. Newcastle, obviously, I think you're going to have a Newcastle bump, right? They've done good business. And then Everton, that, that's the only easy game. And you got three Europa League games. you got to travel Thursday night. Far that's East. Be, that's you, yeah. That's going to be very – like, you can't underestimate, like, Europa League in full swing and that slate of games, and it's all because of this Winter World Cup, which obviously the World Cup should never be in the winter. Man, it's going to affect the season a lot, and I'm looking at that set of fixtures, and then you're going straight into the World Cup, and then we have a lot of players playing, and they come back. So this season could just be, you know, you look at that type of situation – Man, that's tough. And it's a tough start, too. It, it, there's no place to hide. There's no place to hide for this team. It's going to be a lot of games. It's going to be a lot of stress on the players, the new coach. We have to be patient with our new manager. Obi-Wan Kenobi, you are my only hope. That's where we're at. He's dude, He's our hope. Um, and this is why these players aren't going nowhere. It's like you you see how many games they have. It's like Garner's going to be starting games all the time. Iqbal's going to be starting. Yeah, Garnacho's yeah. going to be starting. Like Ahmad and Fukuno ain't going nowhere. They're not going anywhere because they can't because we have so many games. It's actually insane. Um, and injuries are going to happen. And the boys need, need rotation. So, so I, I do, I'm do. i trying to be positive. So it's like you're going to see who's who's going to rise to the top. This season is going to be a mess. We could finish probably as low as 10th. But you're going to see who's legit and who's not. A lot of players need to have their, extent, their, their contracts extended. Rashford. Uh, who else? Shaw. I mean, there are players that we need to kind of decide on. So it's going to be a big, big season for Manchester United. It's the re before the rebuild. So what is it? It's like we're demolishing the house. It's, we're laying it, the no, foundation the, before we build. We're basically just clearing the re house. Nothing before the, it's the re do nothing before the rebuild, which is next year. So I'm excited. Uh, let's get into our predictions. Your league finish. Where do you think Manchester United are going to finish? 
Like I said, sir, I think we could finish as low as 10th, as high as 4th, but I'm calling 6th, 67 points. United to do the same in the league as we finished last season, um, which I think all things considered would be a pretty decent finish because that's no guarantee. All right. I have a caveat to my finish here. Now, you changing? I am you changing? <laughs> no, I'm not changing. I'm a, I'm a Muppet, baby. Yeah, who is we're going – we're going to finish fourth. <laughs> and the, the fourth place is contingent on Ronaldo Stan, Frankie Cummins. Those two players <laughs> we can get in. I can think that Ten Hag can deal with all, all the nonsense of the World Cup winner – all these tough fixtures, I think he can manage the damage. I think Eric Ten Hag, the players might wane, but Eric Ten Hag is going to be cracking that whip. He's going to be getting the best out of him. It's going to be next man up attitude. I think he can manage this. And I think there's also a wrinkle as everyone else has got to deal with the Winter World Cup, right? So there's a lot of other teams that are going to be hurting. Like everyone thinks Tottenham's going to do great. I think they're going to bottle every Chelsea. They could bottle. I think you're going to start seeing expectations for United are low. Expectations for other teams are high. You have this weird season. I think it's going to throw some things in the mix. I think we will be in striking distance at one point. And if we can get Frankie in the midfield, get CR7 scoring, I think we could be the surprise fourth place team. Not saying it's going to be easy. By the hair on our chinny, chin, chin, 70 points, baby. Let's go. See, I'm assuming we don't we lose Ronaldo if we don't get Frankie. So that's that's seventh. We get if we, we lose Ronaldo right? and we don't get like Frankie or like insert someone probably as good as him there. You tell you replace you replace Ronaldo I with seven. Sesco. I think seven. You replace Ronaldo yeah, yeah. with some like unproven kid who scored like eight goals. Yes, exactly. Like, ah, you, get, you ain't finishing no sixth. Either. Let's not hate on him, but it, so like yes, if if you get so if Ronaldo leaves and you get Sesco, and you don't get Frankie, and you don't you don't get another midfielder, and you don't get a right back. Like seventh, eighth. That's what I'm thinking. I did a poll out on Twitter. Where do you think United will finish? Nine point eight percent say we're going to win the league. Love that. <laughs> I love it. Let's go. That's a, I love that. Let's go. Uh, That's awesome. I love it. I love our fans. Top four not winning the league is twenty six point six percent, and then fifth to six, forty four point eight percent. Below six is eighteen point nine percent. So everyone thinks we're going to be in that below fourth to six range. Uh, that's kind of where consensus is. I think it's good that fans have lower expectations. But again, you think of these these key swings in the transfer window and what I just believe in Ten Hag. So if you can get some quality, you can keep CR7, we can, you can score 26 goals again. You can get a solid CDM guy to pull the strings in the middle of the park because you saw that against Athletica. That's our weakness. We don't have someone taking the ball out from the back. You can get Frankie De Young in. You can be looking at maybe a fourth place. So I'm not going to roll it out. Uh, let's get in the trophy hall. What do you think, Alex? What do you got for trophies? What are we going to win? So I, the comparison to last year, what we thought we were going to win, how we were going to finish, it was so funny. I don't even want to replay it because, you know, I'm not a guy for her, uh, self, uh, whatever. But anyway, Europa League, sir. I think Hans and Franz, we finally get it. We right the wrongs of Ole and the Villarreal Yellow Submarine sinking our our cruise liner. Oh, yes. uh, we just stop and we bring it home, up. baby. We're Roma. We it's gonna be stop. Roma, Manchester United, Jose Mourinho rematch. You have Matic in the mix. I think Mickey joined them too. He's bringing all the boys together. Chris Smalling, Chris the Milkman Smalling. Sorry, I can't wait. Hans and Franz, baby, it's ours. We're gonna play that. We're gonna play that beat all year long, buddy. All year. What you got? Would you stop? Come on, baby. Let's go. About <laughs> that song, bro. You gotta play that can, song. You, can you stop <laughs> talking about the Villarreal or Europa League final? Like no, that, I literally have, I literally have pushed that out of my memory until you decide to bring it up on the podcast. So you so couldn't like, pay me a thousand dollars to watch that game. You couldn't pay me a thousand dollars to rewatch that game to the hundred twentieth minute. Watch us uh, score those penalties. Uh, I could just uh, stop. There's not stop, an amount of money. Just stop. <laughs> stop. It's not good to talk about. It. Uh, it's good. Trophy <laughs> hall. Zip, zilch, nada, nothing. Not going to do it. Not happening in here. Manchester United's trophy cabinet still does not get bigger. That's my expectation. So I'm saying it out in the universe. Maybe something changes, but nope. Not going to do it. Uh, best summer signing. I'm going to have to go with the Dane, sir. I'm going with Christian Eriksen. I think he's still got plenty of years left in the tank, assuming his heart issue is all good at 30 years young. 
He is a Premier League proven player, someone I never thought would end up at Manchester United. Honestly, never in my wildest dreams that I'd just see that happening. Um, and I really think, even with Fred in the mix as the holder, I think he'll get to play with Bruno, and I think that will be some electric stuff, especially if Ronaldo stays. If Ronaldo stays, he's going to feed him a lot. We're going to get a lot of free kicks in the edge of the box. They'll have to fight over who gets it, but you know he's such a good dead ball specialist. So I think it's got to be it, especially at the price. You can't beat free, sir. You can't beat free. Who you got? Ronaldo not leaving. Signing of the season, not leaving. Uh, you know, I would probably say Erickson too, but I think if Ronaldo doesn't leave or we can get Frankie, that would probably be the signing of the season. I, if you go on value, Erickson, because he's free, but we are dying for someone who has the cojones to handle the ball out the back because you saw it against Crystal Palace when we went. You see it to, against Atletico today. Atletico today, they're just nervy. They're nervy. They can't handle it. We need someone who's calm, can stroke it back there. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the TBD CR7 not leaving slash FDJ, which I know is a weak sauce. Europa League finish. I got semifinal. Uh, I I don't think Eric. Ten, I, I uh, I don't know. I just hate Europa League after <laughs> I, I, after after We're Villarreal. Going back. I, just, I after Villarreal, I, I just don't want to do this whole final thing with it. Uh. You're going back, baby. Thursday nights are on the menu. Thursday night football. Are you ready for some football? I certainly am. We're winning the whole thing. I don't know what good dance part two is. Hopefully, back at good dance. What a great town that it is. Can't wait, sir. Let's go. All right. Next prediction we have from this Muppet Player of the Season. Who do you got? Our new number eight, Bruno Fernesh. He is going to be the player of the season in my mind. Unlocked. Maybe gets, you know, a little calmer behind the ball with uh, Eric Ten Hag giving him instructions. I think we're going to see the best out of him this season. Can't wait for that. Especially if you brought in Frankie. Then you really see him shine. So looking forward to the upcoming season. See what our Portuguese Magnifico can put together. What about you, sir? All right, so just a little update here. The uh, Europa League final is going to be in Hungary. There you go. There you go. The 14th district of Budapest. So, interesting. The Pukas Arena Park. Uh, so, yeah, we shall see if we make it. Player of the season for me. It's going to be Cristiano Ronaldo, sir. I'm going full Muppet on Ronaldo. He's staying. He's scoring 28 goals. Let's go. Uh, and that segues into our top goal scorer predictions. I'm going to say Cristiano Ronaldo, top goal scorer for Manchester United. The only reason why I'm going this heavy on Ronaldo is because who the hell is going to score goals for us if we don't sign him? So give me your top goal scorer for Manchester United. Our previous top goal scorer before Ronaldo joined, that's Bruno Fernandez. He's going to be back at the penalty spot because Ronaldo, he gone. He's leaving. Whatever it takes. He'll take a pay cut, sir. He'll pay his own buyout. He'll pay, he'll pay Manchester United to leave. Um, but I think Bruno Fernandez is back to our top goal scorer because, you know, we don't have a default number nine. It's big pressure on Martial. I don't see him kind of getting to the numbers that you need to to supersede uh, inform Bruno. And I'm hoping he'll be back to his best this year. Uh, who's going to be our most improved player this season? I'm going Muppet from preseason. I think it's Sancho. You know, he had a very lackluster first season at Manchester United. Um, but I think we're starting to see glimpses of his old confident self. I think that's the man to keep an eye on. Future number seven, hopefully, if we can put together some consistency. Who you got? Sir, the Undertaker, the Undertaker himself. This man, he was dead and buried in Sevilla. And boy, did he punch out of that grave. Tony Martial, English press said he had no chance. The man was dead in Sevilla. He came back from the dead. Looks to be alive at Manchester United. We know what he can do, so I'm going to say... How can you not pick him as most improved? He was dead in buried in Sevilla, and he's back at Manchester United. How is that not most improved? Well, it's one thing to do in preseason. Was alive. It's one thing Sancho to do in preseason. Alive, it's one playing. thing to do in preseason. It's another thing to like put together a great 2022-2023 season. My pick is Sancho. I would love to see Martial do it, dude. Score 20 goals. That would make me the happiest man in the world. No, no, no. If he, if he, if he scores, to be, for the record, if he scores eight goals, he's still technically <laughs> most improved because he was dead not playing for the team. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he, he was he was not. What about scoring, Donnie? You think Donnie's going to get a shot, sir? Uh, he has to. We don't, we don't have any players. I, I don't know what happened, dude, sir. 
call the Monstars, bro. Is so, someone give it like so, someone give Donnie back his mojo because he Seriously. can talk about playing football. You can look at highlights of him before he played Manchester United, but man, you look at him at Everton, nothing. You look at him at Manchester United, nothing. So if he can't get Eric Ten Hag can't get him playing, then he gone. Sir, I mean, I thought we'd see a little more out of him, too, with Ten Hag coming in. And it's like, you know, you see it with Martial and Rashford. And I, I, Donnie, I'm just not not seeing it. Uh, another, that's a solid chunk of cash we paid for him, too. Uh, let's jump into the odds to win the EPL 538.com. They got man shitty with a 46% chance to win the Premier League. The Scouse Bastards, 30%. Chelsea Scum, 11%. Tottenham Hotspur, 5%. Arsenal, 2%, and Manchester United with 1%. So you're saying there's a chance. Manchester United. Re- to get relegated, Manchester United, 4%. All time. <laughs> this is a great idea. We have more of a chance to get relegated than win the league. Probably and right. Our chances to qualify for the Champions League are 18%. I, these predictions don't know what they really do or anything, but you know, we just read them out. Uh, Europa league betting odds, Manchester United, the odds on favorite plus eight fifty to win. Then Lazio, uh, no plus eight fifty for Manchester United arsenal. And then Roma is second plus 1100 Lazio Sociedad, Betis union, Berlin, Rennes. So these are the types of teams we're going to be playing, uh, in Europa league. Let's get into it, sir. You got the music. No, United in the news. All right, jumping into the news. Sir Alex Ferguson is back at Manchester United. I thought he never left. Uh, he has been a consultant. He's been on the payroll. So this is seems quite a lot of uh, PR here. He's always been around the club, always been consulting for the team. I think he's on the Glazer payroll. That's the one criticism that there's a few things you can say about Sir Alex. You know, he is untouchable as far as what he brought to this team, but his relationships with the Glazers, his financial dependency on the Glazers, not criticizing them either. Um, but Richard Arnold, Glazer puppet, hands iconic <laughs> Get boss. It. Get it, sir. Send it. Go hands, on. Ha- Lay hands it iconic on. boss and other legendary figures, including Brian, Brian Robson, a formal role in helping the club with all aspects. Alex Ferguson has been appointed to a think tank at Manchester United. He now has more influence at Old Trafford than any points since his retirement. What is it? like this is just providing cover. I mean, like you know, the more that we read articles, like, and, and this is where you got to come out. Is I don't need to read an article about how you're fixing Manchester United. I don't need to read an article about how you PR spin zone. Ferguson. PR spin zone. I, I don't need to read an article how you gave Sir Alex Ferguson, you know, a title. I need to see that you're doing a good job. And by the way, if you're if you look at what they have done. Arnold, what Arnold has done, Arnold has literally appointed Ralph Rangnick, not backed him, not bought anyone, waited for this summer, fumbled pretty much everything on his plate, then got hammered with some fans, started talking about things he shouldn't talk about, (laughs) said we had a lot of money to spend, hasn't spent it. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, like, I tweeted out a quote uh, this week, and it was by Nikki Butt, and it basically said, Manchester United can't be putting isn't a place where people should be learning on the job. And right now we got people learning on the job and it, it ain't looking good. So as far as Alex being involved, he's been involved a lot since he left. And I don't know if it's been helpful. You know, I'm not trying to say, I, I think you got to close that chapter. I think you got to close this Alex Ferguson chapter. And I think you got to start giving people real with real experience, real roles to make real decisions because we have to move on. And I think part of the reason we have, why we haven't moved on is we've done this whole, every manager has picked and bought different players and there's no cohesion above the manager. And with Eric Ten Hag, we're, although I like him, we're going down that same road again where we're just letting Eric Ten Hag pick the players when we need a serious world-class director of football who can build a long-term infrastructure that creates a squad that is deep and is playing to a style. And then the manager is hired to fit that style and it all is synergistic and works together. And now we're like switching from Ole ball that costs us 400 million, which we switched from Mourinho ball, which costs us 200 million. When we switched from Van Gaal ball, which costs us 300 million. And that's why we're fucked. 
is because we literally just change the tune with every coach and there's no holistic footballing philosophy or anyone with any real experience above the manager. And that is how you don't just burn the billion dollars that Richard Arnold was complaining about the fans, right? It's really it. And you know who was helping burn that money the whole time for that 10 years? Richard Arnold, because he was the number two guy to Ed Woodward. So to think that he's this genius and it was all Ed Woodward's fault, he got the job because he was his number two and we're doing the same thing again. You know, if I saw a CEO come in and say, hey, we're not going to make the same mistakes. We're going to hire Paul Mitchell. I'm going to give him the budget. He's going to spend it. He's going to work with the manager, but he's the top guy. If you watch NFL, he's the GM. He's making the calls. The coach is making the day to day. Those guys work together. It's a critical it's a critical relationship. At the end of the day, the director of football is calling the yay nay on the players coach's input but he has to be the one because he's the one for 10 years the coach is there for three years and united need a long-term vision and without that we're doing the same thing and i think that's because sir alex still involved and that's the way it was done 10 years ago and that was the way it was done when sir alex was at the helm and things have evolved we've seen our noisy neighbors change the game we've seen the scouts bastards change the game and we are falling behind because we got a guy in murtaugh who has no experience and that's it, sir. This is honestly one of the most disappointing pieces of news because you think about it. Love Fergie. He's been on the payroll since he retired. Two million pounds a year to be an executive for Manchester United. That's fine. Let's let him retire. If they were serious about learning from the mistakes, copy rival. Who's doing it well? You focus on what they're doing well and what you know what mistakes they've learned from. You need to have a front office that has a continuity plan that supports the current manager and how he wants to play but is thinking long-term. And the fact that we are just bringing back people that are basically already on the payroll. Brian Robinson gets paid. David Gill, I'm not as confident, but I'm sure he's still getting money from Manchester United to provide advisory work. And obviously, John Murtaugh is our director of football with having no qualifications to do so. The Nicky Buck quote couldn't be more correct. You can't have guys learn on the job unless they at least have like enough experience to be given the chance. Um, and like you said, number twos and yes, men, but this is, this is very concerning because you should be bringing in Paul Mitchell to the world. They were available. They're expensive, but this is just like, Hey, you know, I, I get it. They only want to go in with Eric Ten Hag and not spend the money to build a proper infrastructure around him. But that is putting a lot of onus on the man because that model has not worked. It has not worked. Right, David Moyes, Lou Van Gaal, Jose Mourinho, they all had complete autonomy about picking the squad. It did not work. Maybe it could work four time lucky, maybe, but even still, that's not how the best clubs do it. Maybe they do that nope. with Pep. I mean, Pep does it, I guess. He gets to pick whoever the fuck he wants, but they've got a lot more cash than we do um, and discipline around transfer and transfer prices. So so this is this is concerning. This is very concerning. The times there are changing. You know, I think you need to evolve. I'm not saying Alex Ferguson's to blame for that horrible strategy. I think Ed Woodward is to blame, but I just don't think that like we need more people, legacy staff from that era to be helping the team right now. I think we need to hire the best young and up and coming talent in the game. Like Ayrton Hag is a great example of that. You know, Paul Mitchell would probably another great example of that. Uh, the footballing director from Brighton was another example of that, but Things are changing. The game is changing. And I think the way football clubs have run have changed. We have not changed that. And that is due to the Glazers. So hashtag Glazers out. All right. Getting the trumpets from up tree. Sesco, no official bid yet. But apparently we're talking about it. I heard 55 million pounds. This guy scored against Liverpool. Everybody's hype about him. Sir, what do you make of this? We're hot. We're going to sign uh, Sesco. Sir, it's a bad deal at this price. It's like he doesn't have anywhere near the track record to justify a $55 million pound fee. This is them knowing that we're desperate and we have money because we don't have money, but we still have money because we're Manchester United. Um, Anuko, who's like one of the top scorers in, uh, what's it called? The German League. He's going to be available next year for like 10 million more pounds than this. He's a much better player, much more developed in his career. This just speaks to us like kind of waffling because this is very concerning. I think we have players in our academy in McNeil um, and the other tall lad that we bought from Sunderland that are dude, as probably as good as this kid, just haven't been given a chance to have first team minutes. But like they're a year behind them and they're probably just as good, maybe not quite as tall with many tattoos, but. This is a concerning deal. This is a big punt on a big price because you know they're not going to roll over for if it's twenty million, that'd be one thing. But fifty five million pounds—that's real money, sir. I mean, this goes to the Martinez. You know, it's the same type of thing where it's like 
at a certain price, it ain't worth it, right? And so for me, like twenty five million, I'm like yeah, totally worth a punt. Twenty five million plus fifteen and add on something like that seems pragmatic. Fifty five, like what you smoking? Um, at the end of the day, he looks like he has potential. He's young. Um, now my comment about this guy replacing Ronaldo is, you know, everything's kind of pointing to Ronaldo leaving and the only attacking player we're linked to is this guy. So like it is a replacement for Ronaldo. It's not like this is going to be surplus. It's like, we just seem, seem like we're flailing. United seems like we're just absolutely flailing. Like think about it. Ronaldo could leave. It's like 50, 50. And the only attacking player we're linked to, Link to is this young, unproven kid. It feels it's, like it feels th- like the Moy summer, sir. Like it feels a little bit like, like the Moy summer. Like Tony makes sense from uh, uh, Brentford, you know. Like Tony for fifty five. Like yeah, like he's not worth fifty five. Played in the EPL, I think he scored sixteen. Plays for Brentford, he's a good player. Like sign him up. Like that type of deal makes much more like sense if you're like, hey, Ronaldo's probably gonna leave. We need somebody who can lead the line like that type of business is so much more sane than this. And so who knows exactly where this is coming from or why there's so much smoke here. It just seems interesting. Now, if Ronaldo stays, which everything in the press has said, including Romano, he wants to leave. He wants to leave. Then Sesco, Ronaldo, Martial, like that's interesting to me, but it's not, doesn't look like it's going that way. You got to read the tea leaves. We got to call it as best we can. Frankie de Young, Next one up, nothing's done. Nothing's moved. Barcelona just yapping into the wind. Apparently they can't. It's not even worth reporting on. It's literally doesn't nothing changes. It's just like no, dumb they, they, quotes they from their, sign... their president. Yeah, he that guy is like <laughs> won't stop talking. I'll tell you what, you know who's making Richard Arnold look good? Laporte. You know, I'll tell you, you, you can get worse than Arnold for sure. Uh Laporte look like Richard Arnold drinking with people, like still isn't as bad as this guy. <laughs> this guy's like, Are you all right, dude? This guy's like losing it. Um so you know that's that what Barcelona is doing is like is just out of their mind. They might not be able to sign these players or register them if they can't get rid of Frankie. Then they're playing hardball with Frankie. And so at the end of the day, who the hell knows how, what's going to happen? But that's there's no update. Uh, last latest update from Ronaldo. He reiterated his di- desire to leave. Sporting Lisbon is now being explored. But again, this has to do with that whole. Please cancel my contract so I can go for nothing. Which, again, I don't think United really owes that to Ronaldo, honestly. It all has to do with his Champions League goals and him just being insane and how Messi can't beat him at anything. Which, like, <laughs> makes sense if you think about Ronaldo. But, like, okay, whatever, dude. Um, at the end of the day, I hope there's no club that wants him. This same thing as Frankie de Young. Just sagas. So you're not going to know about Frankie de Young or... Christian Ronaldo till September 1st, and thank God we're kicking off against Brighton in seven days because this shit's driving me nuts. 100 percent This whole window has been frustrating. I do like the players we have. I need double, probably. At least not oh, more than double. Six. You can, you can get eight signings and be and not and be in a comfortable position. But the Frankie combo plus Cristiano trying to leave rumor is almost just too much. It's just like they're so annoying. That they get more news every day because of big names and a big club, and I'm just ready for both to be done. Um, and I have a feeling that you're absolutely right. It's like this shit is going to drag it to the very last day of the window, but at least we're going to have a lot of football in between because this shit is getting real in, what, seven days' time, sir. Next Sunday, let's go. I know. Uh, next bit of news, Ethan Laird might go on loan to Watford. So young right back did well on preseason tour, but he needs regular minutes. He is not going to get it at United. I don't know. Right back might want to keep him around. We shall see. Um, and all, obviously Roma at Milan interested in Bayi. I think we got to be doing a permanent deal, but I'll tell you what Ed Woodward might've left the club, but the buy high sell low still in place at Manchester United. I'll tell you that because you're going to buy players for lots of money. And you guys sell players for nothing most of the time. Just let their contracts run down. It's insane. Or very cheap. Very cheap. Baja, sell and you would have thought we would have. No money down. No money, money down. down. You would have thought we would have sold like at least like a Telus by now. Like we have four left backs or like a Williams. Like those players are not moving off the books quickly enough. Even a Twine Zabi or a Bay, it's like nobody's moving. You know, so it's just that is worrying because there's definitely value. I mean, value and demand for these players. They're like. 
they're decent players. Uh, William, you should be able to, you should be able to sell. I uh, tell us you should be able to sell, and it just it's slow going, sir. Hey, we shall see. Lots to do. Lots going on. We are going to drop a Brighton preview podcast this Wednesday. We're back, baby, on the regular scheduled programming. We're going to be breaking down Brighton, talking about the transfer news as it's going on. But we kick off next weekend. I am so excited to put on the jersey, drink the coffee. Let's go. Manchester United are back, baby. I don't care about any of the drama. I'm just excited for some football. want some goals. I want, I want to see some exciting play. I want to see the players trying. I want to see them working hard. And now, if Eric Ten Hag can do that, then, oh my God, that hopefully that'll make me forget last season because last season sure as hell didn't help me forget about that Europa League final. It's basically just like the Europa League final played out over the course of uh, eight week, eight months, you know, just like over and over again, ups and downs and all around and down the shitter. So that was a hell of a season. On to the next one. This one's going to be a big, it's got to be better. Can't be worse. So I'm optimistic, excited. Excited about finishing eighth, sixth, whatever. doesn't matter. I just want to see the boys play with some heart, play with some kind of style of play, and actually show like they want to be there. Even if half of them can't make it. I want to see the ones that that rise to the occasion, the cream that rise rises to the proverbial top. Let's see what this team's made of and then get rid of the ones that can't make it. If you like the America Devils, we are for fans, by fans. Please support the podcast. Check out our Patreon page, patreon.com slash American Red Devils. Write a review, like, subscribe, wherever you listen. We don't have any ads. We do it for the love of the game. We're only fan supporters, so everything you guys can do, you know, liking, subscribing, it goes a long way to help us. Alex, give us our top downloads last seven days. Number one, how you doing? How you doing? Washington, D.C. We got Brooklyn, New York, Los Angeles, California. Inglewood, California, Batavia, Illinois, Vero Beach, Florida, Reno, Nevada, St. Louis, Missouri, Houston, Texas, and last but not least, Nairobi, Kenya. We also got Brisbane, Australia on the list. Appreciate all the American Red Devils listening week in, week out. We could not do it without you. The season is starting this next weekend. Can't wait, brother. Can't wait. It's going to be a big game against the Seagulls at home. Can't come soon enough. Eric Ten Hags. Red Army, let's go. You got a song for us to end the pod with? So I got two. I don't know which one to do. I think I'm going to do We Do What We Want. Enjoy the week. We'll see you midweek for that preview of Brighton.